You ever read something that just made you really question your morals? <laughs> Shamo, one of my all-time favorite manga. And a really dark and dastardly one. It's, um, it's fucked up. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, if you can't tell right now, I, I have very dark tastes when it comes to what I like and what I don't like. And uh, Shamo is one of the darkest things I've ever read. It's one of the first I've ever seen in manga I've ever read. Because I read, it, I read it at a recommendation of series that are very much like Baki the Grappler, which is one of my all-time favorite series as well. And I pretty much uh, heard that the main character, Ryo Narashima, was an absolute piece of shit. And then when I heard that, I was essentially thinking, hmm, I kind of like pieces of shit characters. One of my all-time favorite characters, if you don't know, uh, well, one of my all-time favorite authors in general, is uh, Mario Puzo. He wrote the uh, Godfather, original Godfather, not well, technically the Godfather trilogy with the novelization form. And he's one of what I consider one of the all-time greatest writers, especially when it comes to discussion of Gray morality and just the descent into evil. I have a loving care for seeing how someone just devolves and becomes an absolute disgusting and representable character. Michael Corolone and Henry Hill are some of my favorite characters in fiction. Well, not Henry Hill necessarily. I more or less like what Henry Hill represents in that, yes, it's all attractive, the drugs, the money, the sex, and the violence, and all that. But uh, inevitably, that's only going to catch up to you one day. And Michael Corolone is a similar vein. In that Michael Corleone's strategy is that ultimately for the sake of his family and for those he loved and care about, he became an absolute monster, an apathetic creature that put the business over his family, confusing and thwarting both. And it was an awful tragedy to read. And it's similar with Ryo Narashima. Ryo Narashima is a child of circumstance, a one born for evil, and one that was inevitable for what the circumstances he grew in. Now, I believe this requires some context, which you can chat back check this on the Shamal Wikipedia. However, I just went through some interviews. Now, I feel like I have to press up this again and again, over and over, that Japan and America have typically very different standards when it comes to how societal values is. Now, certainly within America, we certainly do have an issue of conformity and hiding how we truly do feel. Some will argue with it as whatever labels. However, we do have to understand just general hiding with your emotions and not being open with others you care about is a typical issue all across the world. This is none other than a bigger issue in Japan, where which if you don't really conform to whatever societal standards someone comes up for you, well, uh, you're effectively a degenerate, an annoyance, or a frustration, or a disgrace to your family. Because do keep in mind, arranged marriages are still very much somewhat of a thing within the conservative ideals of Japan. You don't necessarily have a free whim or a free will in Japan sometimes. That's not to say the country is completely and utterly flawed. To present that completely is just absolutely ignorant on my part and not a very fair representation. Japan really does have positive when it comes to its culture and ideas. However, it's very fair to mention that Japan very much has an underbelly. And that's what Ryo Narushima sort of represents. Ryo is the living embodiment of circumstance, being a shitty person, just general from birth, or reject, dejection from the birth, and just general sociopathy that we need to discuss really within the nation. Now, certainly, it's um very grim and very dark, and it's very bleak, and Ryo's character is actually influenced by a lot of things. He's influenced by very real accounts of what goes on within Japanese juvenile detention prisons. Uh, one of my all-time favorite series, Rainbow, which is, again, sadly not available within the States, just like Shimo isn't. It's only really, I believe, available in France, and as well as some Spanish translations, apparently. But um, Rainbow, Shamo, very much addressed a big issue within Japanese juvenile detention centers, as well as just Japanese prisons in general, of uh, gang rapes and male-on-male -male rape. It's a very common issue that just kind of gets pushed through the rug. Whether it's someone of a higher standard station of power ultimately using that power to basically manipulate and control these young boys to do these things, just effectively dynamics of power being very much abused and basically being forced upon them. Because do keep in mind, uh, that type of stuff of that wasn't banned until around 1983. You can look that up. And it's one of the reasons why Japan is such a weird country in that regard. Uh, it's also the real Narashima's character is also influenced by a real-life murder that was, of course, of a boy, a young, I believe, teenage high school student around that time, who uh, who's only referred to as Student A or Victim A or Student A, pretty much, 
who went ahead and went into, I believe, a kindergarten or a preschool and murdered, I believe, around four to four children by cutting off their heads. And it's a horrifying thing. It's just something you really can't believe. But if you really do look at Japan's sort of history when it comes to crime, it's some of the most disturbed and violent things out there. The Yakuza are very much an issue. Uh, Junko Furuta's case, which is one of the most infamous in history, honestly, when it comes to murder, because it's just how the the sheer barbarity of what it was it's in general that japan really does just have an underbelly that just kind of gets pushed to the side and, and it's just not even talking about the surface level issues of overworking and suicide depression which is an honest to god huge issue within japanese culture Ro ryo represents not only the, sh the shitty side of people the yakuza the abuse the gang rapes the murder just all the stuff we all typically ignore he also does represent the issue of conformity and how just these standards of what we place upon the teenagers within the society of Japan is not only incredibly unhealthy, but it's unsafe. Because, well, yes, certainly uh, you get some stuff overall real being hinted at that he was essentially a born defective, that he was born a sociopath or a psychopath. It's clear that his circumstances didn't help at all. Because what's typically considered normal in Japan is such a bizarre and conformative idea that they have to adhere to it was just basically a, supposedly an, a, a, just basically an inevitability at that point that Ryo was going to snap and break. And once he does snap and break, we instead of people trying to help him, it just seems like they more or less reprimand him and treat him like he's a dog. Which again is a huge issue back then within Japan. Uh, around, around, I believe, the 1980s or so, as well as around the early 1940s, where much these people weren't even treated as people sometimes. They were just treated as dogs and they would be whipped and beaten and beaten into conformity in society. And if they weren't able to do that, well, they were a lost cause. They didn't learn anything within the two years that they're allowed there. Yeah, two years in juvenile detention because technically it doesn't matter what the severity of the crime is. Two years, they're they're falling under a my, basically a minor act, and they're only allowed to be released by then. And Rio never really didn't develop or change. Yes, he learned how to basically grow stronger in a way, but he didn't really. He's still just as mentally on edge individual within the time of his prison. Now this isn't really a spoiler. I think this is actually necessary to warn the people about. Uh the first two chapters are some of the most brutal shit you'll read, and it's one of the strongest introduction I think I've ever seen for a series. But Ryo in the is at the sixteen age, in summer, he murdered both of his parents. Right in front of his sister and his dog. He murdered both of them just because he just snapped. He couldn't handle the pressure anymore. He just snapped and murdered them. And then he's just beaten and mistreated all the while in his prison. And this is his first day alone. But on this, just the night, the first night, he's getting raped. And again, as I said, this is a huge issue within Japan's prison system that's just not addressed sometimes. And it's fucked up. It's just this weird issue as well as sexual oppression within Japan that's honestly a surprised issue there. You wouldn't really think it with all the anime and everything, but it's, yeah, sexual repression's an honest-to-god fucking issue as well. <laughs> as well as just general perversion, but that's besides the point. But, yes, Ryo was raped, gang raped repeatedly twice. And I believe in just, like, the first three chapters, he does some of the most brutal, brutal shit that you'll see in the series. If you can't get past those three chapters, you're not going to be able to handle the rest of the series. It calms down towards the end when, well... Yeah, I should say this as well. In the middle of the series, around a certain arc, you'll know when it is. You'll notice sort of a weird shift in the tone. It's because around that time, there was creative differences between the author, two authors that are on, the artist and the as well, the original writer that was on board, between who exactly had the rights to the series, and that ended up resulting in a lawsuit between the two. Now, after this extremely long hiatus, it was essentially ruled that the original artist will ultimately have position and power over the series. And you can just notice this audible shift in tone. The series kind of grows a bit in a weird, positive route. And from there, it's sort of different. But in the first couple arcs before in this certain portion, uh, I'll just refer to it as the man with the mask arc. The man with the mask arc, um, yeah, just around that point, that's when the series stops being as brutal. But before that, it's brutal. Ryo does some horrible shit that will probably make you absolutely unsympathetic for him. You won't care that he was gang raped or mistreated, but that will always remain your head. Because you know, that's one of the things I love about that series. 
Ryo was such an awful person later on, but you get why. You get why he fell and he became such this awful person. However, you can kind of understand why. And you kind of root for him because you're like, I know where this guy came from. I've seen how far he's been. He went from the weakest little shit, the lowest of the low, absolutely mistreated in every way possible. And people just blame him. Everything. Like, yeah, certainly there's some fault on his own. He can't deny responsibility on it just being society's fault necessarily. That's one of the things. But you're conflicted because it's just, it's society's fault in a way because, yeah, they didn't do anything to help him. However, it's also Rio's fault because he's willingly not changing for the better. He has chances for redemption. He's a, he's a sort of like Tony Soprano. I just barely connected that. He's sort of like Tony Soprano in that he's just this... It's his, he keeps having opportunities to go to the light, but he just falls. He People keep trying to save him, but he just can't do it. And what sympathetic qualities he does have are rendered kind of null by his immaturity and overall brashness but you understand why he's like this and it's one of the genius things about the series Rio is just this super complex character that you will feel competitive about and it's perfectly fine to hate him as a person and just straight up just say this guy can't be saved anymore but at the same time when you see those moments where you think I think he can be happy I want him to be happy in a bit I think he can change and that he should be able to just become a better person Again, it's the Tony Soprano effect, because Tony Soprano does some terrible shit. He has led to people who were innocent dying. He's ratted out people he called his friends. He's treated people he knows as shit, because he's a piece of shit. But in the same way, you kind of want Tony to become a better person. And it's not necessarily just saying, like, you know, oh, uh, it's perfectly fine to do bad things, so long as they keep trying to be better. No, it's not that kind of thing. I don't want to interpret that as fucking <laughs> spat interpretation. But that's not what the series is about. It's about just understanding you can't deny responsibility. It doesn't mean people can deny the responsibility of their own for the shit they did to you. But at the same time, you can accept that you're bad. You're awful. You're a piece of shit that probably doesn't deserve any forgiveness. That doesn't mean you can't not help people. And it's one of the things about Real as well that's endearing. He just goes through such a magnitude of arcs yet he still does it in a realistic sensical way it's sometimes just like people can say it's going to be repetitive like oh will he will he not be redeemed and it's kind of not the point it's sort of the case of just showing this is Ryo Narashima here's his story and I think that's one of the sim symbolic things with the name of the series if you don't know what a shamo is it's a type of cock and I don't mean cock in the way of like an oh penis I mean legitimately a male chicken. He's it's a type of rooster that's very infamous that for being violent and being used obviously in cockfights. And it's symbolic because Rio is like 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 a like a chameau. He's very violent. He's needlessly violent. But um you can kinda of understand why, because of the area and environment he grew up in, how he was raised, how he was dealt with, because you gotta take the question of well, is it the animal's fault for being violent, or is it the animal's fault for the environment it grew in? Is it the owner? Is it the people around them? Is it a mix of both? And that's one of the beautiful things about the series that I think is also great. And that's one of the reasons why I love the ending so much. That's sort of the nature and nurture, or sometimes the mixture of both. Japan does have a very, very much more gray morality center compared to us, typically. They were, grew up more or less not necessarily on the ideas of Christianity, which were obviously very much treated back then. The whole story of its own buddhism is not necessarily a moral grandiose idea it's buddhism and hinduism and everything along those lines is very much an idea of how shaped it is within the japanese sort of core as well as you know the ideas of confucius as well and it's something you're going to really have to integrate with when it comes to japanese culture and identity and i think what people need to understand when it comes to reading stories like these where the characters are absolutely reprehensible just sort of the identity of well are we truly evil? Are we truly good? Can we really do these slants, these narrative generalizations of us as people in such a simplistic view? And that's one of the reasons why I really do recommend people read Shamo. If you can't get the Spanish editions at any point, do it. It's worth it. The art is absolutely gorgeous. The writing and storytelling, while certainly there are some gaping plot holes sometimes within a certain arc, the man with the mask, 
that gets brought up, an idea that gets brought up, and then it's never really addressed again. But again, it relates to the ideas of Confucius, as well as and just as well legalism, as well as the idea of authority within the moral rights and everything along those lines. I think people really should study and get their ideas on. <laughs> I'm not saying you have to read, you know, the the the, the Tao Te Ching or the Confucius Analects sort of great learning or anything like that. I think you just need to have an idea of how Japan's morality sort of is, as well as the integration of Chinese methodology as well. Um, what can I say as well, besides the fact of why should you not read it? Um, ending's not the greatest. I think the ending itself, the final chapter is fucking fantastic. I just think the final boss is not worth it. I get the symbolic meaning of what the boss represents. He sort of represents the positive side somewhat, the sort of pure naivete of Japan in a way, of what people want to be, the Momotaro type. But um, I think for that, it just doesn't work, especially with a um, another, with the side character that are there that, does, that sort of contradicts the idea. I don't think it would fit. I just feel like it was just a goofy attempt and it didn't really fit for ending at all. Uh, again, the gaping plot hole with the man with the mask art that sort of gets brought up, but again, that, that may have been due to the creative differences that were happening at the time. And while I do love the complexity of Rio, I think if you don't like him, if you just think he absolutely fell off the edge and he can never be redeemed, you're not going to enjoy anything in the series. Because he's very much a Tony Soprano type in how he sort of operates and how he is dealt with. Uh, what can I say beyond that? Um, sometimes the art can look weird. The action's not the greatest in how it's paneled, but oh my god, it's beautiful sometimes. The use of black and white is so blended easily. Um, again, as well as the fact, uh, how do I say this? Um, the rape in this series is very graphic. The violence is very graphic. This series does not hold back. Yes, there's censorship, because you can't really show the things that Ryo goes through towards an underage minor but um he, the series gets really dark at times and it's it can be a bit much for people so if you can't handle graphic depictions of rape gang rape uh just any type you can't handle graphic violence i don't think shemo is a series for you and the biggest issue you if you don't like <clears throat> how do i say this in, in the most elegant and quid criticious way don't sail if you can't sail the seven seas. Don't sail the seven seas. You can't. We, there's no Eng, official English translation for Shamo. I want there to be, and I'm thinking of doing similar to what Fizz did with uh, Fizz and North Star, and that they ask, you know, oh, what series do you want to see translation? If fucking Mercilago can get a fucking translation, I think Shamo will get a translation. All right, um, Mercilago is awful, by the way. But uh, yeah, uh, probably just the best I could say is talk to Viz and ask them in their emails, you know, oh, uh, what series do you want to see uh, translated into English? Just ask them, hey, can you translate Viz? Can you translate Shamo? Because uh, they'll translate pretty much anything nowadays. It's pretty much how it is. And it's weird how light novels are getting more treatment than that. Fucking light novels. Interesting that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, pretty much that's the most I can say. Uh, what translations that exist on the internet are either on various websites I don't trust because I read it digitally by a safer method that I can't really disclose because I'm not going to promote piracy here. Uh, you can buy, I you, I don't think you can buy it on Amazon US beyond just some Spanish edition covers. Um, so you can speak Spanish, I think you can get it there. As well as I think if you just go on to the Amazon JP quote and essentially ask me at any time, you know, Oh, what does this mean? And I could probably just try to help you there with how to actually, what the dialogue is there, what the scene is trying to convey. But the series is one of those few where you can just kind of get understand what's being said just by visuals alone. But uh, unless, of course, certain plot points, you wouldn't understand. Uh, the most I could say is, if you can't seal the seven seas, then you can't seal the seven seas. Just wait, either wait for the series to get an annotation, which is probably not going to happen. There's also there is a live action movie that was made at, I believe Taiwan or China 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 or Taiwan Greater Taiwan let's just say that <laughs> I kid 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 but yes uh, I believe it's either made in Taiwan or China for some reason I don't know why I don't think the series was popular but yeah it was made in one of those two and it's not very good it's a pretty awful movie uh, you can watch it. I believe it's completely free on YouTube, but it's 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 shit. 
it's shit. It's not good. It's 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 cuts down so much material and it's not a good ending. Um, yeah, that's pretty much the only reasons why you shouldn't read it. Uh, that's the only reason why. Honestly, I just recommend it highly. It's one of the finest finest crafted series I've ever read. And while the ending certainly does have its problems, I think it's a masterly crafted and great character study, as well as a fun and amazingly badass fucking. Oh, it's such a cool fucking martial arts manga. Read it if you like dark and dastardly things. If you can't handle that kind of material, I don't recommend it. Other than, other than there's not much I can say beyond just see y'all later. You have a good one, okay? If you guys have any questions, please feel free to ask me in the comment section below. And I'll try to answer your questions as much as possible, okay? If you have any further questions, feel free to ask. You have a good one, guys. Agent P, signing out.